This might look like what we call matrix multiplication, and that's because it is, but it's also a meme. And I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's funny, not like ha ha funny, but it is pretty funny just how deeply disguised a meme can be with inside knowledge. Now, the original meme had just a touch of additional context, which was this Roman dressed character here pointing at the matrices that are getting multiplied. And this was posted in r slash explain the joke. The poster says he knows it's a lost joke, but he doesn't get it. And then this was posted in r slash math memes where someone further has asked, are there infinitely many pairs of matrices uh, that, that work like this, which I'll explain in a minute. Now, maybe you know what a lost joke is, but you don't know how this is a lost joke. Or maybe you know how to do matrix multiplication, but you don't know what a lost joke is. Or maybe you know matrix multiplication and you know what a lost joke is, but you're still not sure how this is a lost joke. Well, let's clarify everything and start with the easy part of going over what the loss meme is. Loss was a particular strip from the webcomic Control Alt Delete. This webcomic is often abbreviated CAD for Control Alt Delete, and the famous loss strip was released on June 2nd, 2008. So this is a long running gag. So here is the infamous Loss comic that was published on that day so many years ago. It depicts the main character Ethan rushing to the hospital to visit his fiance Lila who has suffered a miscarriage. If you're not familiar with the Loss meme, you may be wondering how this could possibly turn into a long-running internet joke or why the funny math man is talking about something as serious as a miscarriage. Well, that jarring shift in theme is really why this got so much attention in the first place. This was a significant tonal shift for the webcomic. And as a result of people being confounded and bemused by this tonal shift in the webcomic, people couldn't help but make references and jokes to this comic. And over time, the joke basically became to reference this webcomic through increasingly abstract or obfuscated representations of the original four panels. You have a vertical line for the first panel. For the second panel, we have two vertical lines. Often the second is offset or shorter than the first, but sometimes the second line is the same as the first line. It's just two lines for the two characters. Same thing for the third panel, two lines for the two characters. And then the last last panel is an L shape with a vertical and a horizontal line. And from what I've seen, the approach that the internet people take with this meme is that the more obfuscated this form is in a four panel meme, the funnier the joke. Here's a typical example where it's not clear at all that this would be a loss meme or that it has any relation to a four panel comic. But if someone looks at it, they see five things everyone hates, but there are only four icons. And the fact that that kind of suggests four panels and that there's something missing immediately makes the reader think, oh, it must be loss. This poor Wi-Fi signal stands in place of the single vertical line and then the low battery for the two vertical lines and then the poor signal signal for another two vertical lines, and then the buffering symbol for the vertical and horizontal. Of course, the fifth thing everyone hates is the overused loss meme. I get quite a kick out of this one because it's kind of poking fun at two overused things at once. You can find tons of problems like this, which one will fill up first, and it's a bunch of awkwardly connected buckets. This one just happens to actually be a loss meme. These ones are amusing. They're not obvious, but when you see them, it really jumps out at you that it is just loss. But of course, our matrix multiplication meme is not so obvious. To understand this one, the next thing we have to know is matrix multiplication. Multiplication is one of our most basic operations and can be very easily understood as repeated addition. What's three times five? Well, it's three copies of five added together. And so the fact that multiplication is so simple and well understood Stood is part of what makes matrix multiplication so jarring to people because its definition
function, as we'll see, feels wildly different. And I mean, forget about the multiplication. Some of you may not even know what a matrix is, let alone how to multiply them together. Well, if you want to upset a math nerd, just say, isn't a matrix just a rectangular array of numbers? So, for example, here's a matrix. And to show you how matrix multiplication works, I'm going to write another matrix, and we're going to multiply these two matrices together. So here we have two rectangular arrays of numbers, they're two matrices, and we're going to multiply them. But how the heck does that work? The way I like to view how matrix multiplication is done is that it's just rows getting matched up with columns. This first row of the first matrix gets matched up with this column of the second, and then it gets matched up with this column, and then this one. What do I mean by matched up? Well, we do what's called a dot product. When I look at this first row and this first column, notice how they have the same number of entries. So what we do is multiply the corresponding entries and add those products together. So 1 times 0 plus 2 times 1. That gives us the first entry in our product, which I'm going to leave like that for now, just so you can see where the number comes from. Then we match this row up with the second column. Same thing, what do we mean by match up? Well, we do a dot product. We multiply the corresponding entries and add them together. So in this case, one times two plus two times one. And then finally, this row gets matched up with this column, multiply the corresponding entries and add them together. So this matrix on the right is the product of these two. And we've just figured out how to find the first row. It's found by doing dot products with this first row and the columns of the second matrix. Now for the second row, we're going to take the second row of the first matrix and match it up with the columns of the second matrix. So I'm doing dot products with this second row now, and first I'm going to match it up with that first column of the second matrix, negative 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1. And then we match this row up with the second column, negative 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1. And then finally, this row gets matched up with the last column, so we're going to have negative 1 times 1 plus 0 times negative 1. And notice how for this to make sense, we needed the first matrix to have the same number of columns as the second matrix had rows. That way the rows of the first would match up with the columns of the second. This has two entries, this has two entries, this has two entries, this has two entries, and so on. That is a limitation of matrix multiplication. The number of columns in the first matrix has to match the number of rows in the second matrix for the multiplication to be defined. Anyways, we could crunch the numbers here to figure out what this matrix is, and you can verify your if you like that this is what we get after crunching the numbers. So this matrix times this one gives us this one. And from what I can find, this seemingly peculiar definition for matrix multiplication was first laid out by a fella named Jacques-Philippe Marie Binet in 1812. And he didn't just introduce this as a random way of crunching rectangular numbers together. Instead, he was introducing matrix multiplication as a way to compose linear transformations. We don't need to go in depth about that, but I do want to give you just a quick taste of what we mean by a matrix being a linear transformation. Here we are in the familiar and beloved xy plane. Now this point over here we'll say is the point 1 1. From the origin then, we could draw a vector that goes to that point 1, 1. A vector appears as an arrow in the xy plane, it's something with magnitude and direction. Now suppose we want to reflect this vector across the y axis. Perhaps it's easy for you to see that to reflect this vector, across the y-axis, we must negate the x-coordinate. So if this is the x-position negative 1, then after reflecting the vector across the y-axis, it would go from the origin to that point at negative 1, 1, and it would look roughly like that. This reflection about the y-axis is an example of what we call a linear transformation. And these linear transformations can be very compactly and systematically carried out via matrix multiplication. Just a super quick example, because I know you want to get to the meme. We could write our original vector, 1, 1, as what we call a column matrix. So it's a matrix with a single column. We also call it a column vector. And if I want to carry out this transformation of reflecting the vector across the y-axis, 
Well, this can be done by simply multiplying by the correct matrix for that linear transformation. This is called the standard matrix for this particular linear transformation, and it looks like this. We can carry out the multiplication using the process we just went over. We match up this first row with this one column, so negative one times one plus zero times one, that's just negative one, and then match up this row with this column. Multiply the corresponding entries and add. So zero times one plus one times one. That adds to positive one, and that is our transformed vector. And of course, since this is the standard matrix for the linear transformation of reflection across the y axis, the result of the multiplication is the same vector that we got just figuring this out from inspection. Suffice to say, the definition of matrix multiplication is a very meaningful thing. We could compose multiple linear transformations by multiplying their standard matrices together. With all of that said, we've got some appreciation for this really cool operation, and we are prepared to carry it out to understand what's going on in this loss meme. All right, I've written out the two matrices here. Doing this multiplication does involve some pretty serious number crunching. I won't go through it all, but I will write out the details. We begin by matching the first row here up with the first column. Multiply corresponding entries and add. And then this row with this column. Multiply corresponding entries and add. And then we do the same thing, this row with this column, and then this row with this column. And so we end up with this mess. Now, people who know matrix multiplication know that a two by two matrix times a two by two matrix will give us a two by two matrix. So when someone with that knowledge sees this, they know that the answer to this multiplication is something that kind of resembles a four panel comic. It would just be a two by two array of numbers, which is what might make someone think it's gonna be a loss joke. But there is an issue because we know that we're going to get a rectangle rectangular array of four numbers, but what number looks like an L? Because we're going to need something L-shaped for that last panel. Well, if you crunch these numbers, you're going to get 1, 2, 2, and 50. Okay, so you might have been expecting 11 in those entries, but no, they're equal to 2. And at this point, all the pieces click into place. You realize that if you wrote this 2 in Roman numerals, well then it would match that second and third panel of loss. There's the Roman dressed character pointing at the product, which says, ah yes, that must be what we have to do, is write these entries from the product as Roman numerals, and perhaps you would remember, or you'd have to look up what 50 is, as a Roman numeral. Of course, we know one is just a vertical line, two is two vertical lines, 50, as it turns out, is an L. And that's how this turns out to be a pretty solid loss meme. Like I said, I think the more obfuscated the joke is, the harder it hits. And this one was pretty obfuscated. Now, the final question is simple to answer. Are there infinitely many pairs of matrices that multiply to this? This being 1, 2, 2, 50? The answer is yes. We know there are at least two matrices, A and B, that multiply to give this matrix 1, 2, 2, 50. But are there infinitely many such pairs? Yes. All you'd have to do is let B be any 2x2 two two matrix you like, with the additional requirement that the difference of the products of its two diagonals are not equal to zero. So A times D minus B times C, that would have to not equal zero. If you look back at the two matrices we multiplied, 15 times four is 60, minus two times 29, that's minus 58. That's not zero, so it was able to work here. And same thing in general. This thing is actually called the determinant of the matrix. And if it's non-zero, that means this matrix has a multiplicative inverse. That means we could multiply both sides of this equation on the right by the inverse of B, and then we would have an equation to find A. Thus, for any B, as long as its determinant is non-zero, we'd be able to cancel it out to solve for A, so that the product turns out to be the loss meme. 
If you want to learn more about the Lost meme, I don't know what to tell you. But if you want to learn more about all that cool matrix transformation stuff, it's covered thoroughly in the course Linear Algebra. I have a big playlist full of Linear Algebra videos. I'll link that in the description if you're interested. Also, check out my math fashion brand, MathShin.com, for the coolest math clothes ever created. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and unsort the table If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake, I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull my brain and push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded Psychosomatic habits, why you so sick?